In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at creating a simple app that can increase and decrease the value of a variable in state. But before I get started, I just want to mention that there are currently two different ways to do this in React. So there is a hook based approach and then there is a uh, class based approach. So if you take a look at React's documentation, this would be the hook based approach, which is a functional component that makes use of the use state hook. And then there is a class based approach that makes use of uh, state up here in the constructor of the class. So the reason why there are two different approaches to this is because hooks are actually new to React. They've been around since about 2018. Uh, and what they do is they just replace some of the features that were previously only available to React in a class. So because there are two different ways of doing things, which way is right? Well, the better way to do things is to do it using a hook. And that's because React's sort of in this transitional phase at the moment where they're trying to phase out uh, classes and phase into hooks. So all new code should be written as a hook. So now let's take a look at using a hook to store a value in state. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new file and we'll call this counter example.js. And I'm gonna paste in some standard React boilerplate. We're just importing React from React and declaring a functional component. Now, if I save this and I go back over to app.js, I should be able to import that in and we can probably just comment out hello world for now as well. So we've got a blank document over here. Uh, now let's take a look at uh, storing va a value in state. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a constant and I'm gonna open up an array and this array is gonna take in two values. The first value is the name of the variable that we wanna create. In this case, it's count. And the second value is just a name of a function that we wanna use to set the value of this variable later on. So in this case, let's go with set count. And so that's kind of the standard naming convention is your second function is always just gonna be a setter for that variable. And now we set that equal to a function and the function is called use state. And actually let's just uh, do it this way so that I can make sure that I import that with React. So this is a React function that we're gonna be making use of. And this function takes in one argument and that argument is the value that we want to store in state. So in this case, let's start off with the value of zero. So I know that this does look a little bit complicated, especially coming from a JavaScript side of things. Why would you be storing your variables like this as an array? It probably makes a lot more sense if you just copy that and actually console.log it. So let's actually console.log use state and I think for now let's actually just comment that out uh, but if we inspect element now and we go over to the console you can see what's actually being logged here is an array with a value of zero and then a function so that's actually what's being returned and that's why we go about creating that variable in such a weird way but now we should have a value stored in state of zero. And hopefully you've installed React Developer Tools because this is a great time to make use of that. So if we go over to our dev tools here, you can see that I've got components that I can inspect and I can take a look at the counter example. And here in hooks, I've got a state with a value of zero. Of course, if I were to change this value to 10, then I should have a value of 10 stored in state. But let's start off with zero, right? So now what I wanna do is just output that count down here. And I think we can do that in an H1 just so that it's nice and big. And I'll open up some curly braces and display that count in the browser. So I've got the value of zero output over here. The next thing I wanna do is create something to click on so we can set that count. So what I'm, what I'm gonna do is create another H1. And the only reason I'm doing this is just so that these uh, elements are nice and big to click on. And also I don't really have any CSS to style these just yet. So what I wanna do is I'm going to just uh, add in the text 
plus, and then I'm going to add in an on click uh, listener over here. And this is going to be set to some JavaScript. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna use an arrow function. So this is just kind of the standard syntax for this. Um, but we use an arrow function and then we call the setter that we declared above. And then we provide this setter with a value. So in this case, if I wanted the plus button to increase our uh, counter over here by one, then I would add count and plus one. So that's going to use the current count plus one. So if we save this now and go back over the browser and we click plus, that increases our counter every time we click on the word plus. Now we could do the exact same thing here for uh, minus. So let's just change the text to minus and we can set count to minus one. And so now every time I hit the plus button, that increases the counter. And every time I hit the minus button, that decreases the counter. And so that's just the standard way of working with state in React. And we're gonna be making use of this in the next video to create a cool opening and closing mobile menu. But for now, I think let's just go back over to app.js and we can get rid of the counter and I'm going to only use the hello world component here. So that is all I have for you guys in this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Please leave a like, leave a comment, share this video with your friends. Tell them that it's one of the best React courses you've ever seen for free. I really need the exposure. And yeah, did I mention this is a free course? So just share it with everyone. I mean, why not share free stuff with everyone, right?